Hello and welcome to Safe Pasture. My name is Sherry Hammers and today we're continuing in the book by Andrew Murray, The Holiest of All. We will be uh, starting in chapter 42, but this in this chapter 42 is the beginning of a third a section. I think that's right. It's the third section in this book. And he calls this section the third warning. And this co covers chapters 5 um, in Hebrews, chapters 5, verse 11, through chapter 6, verse 20. We're going to start off, oh, and the title of this little chapter is of the sin of not making progress in the Christian life. Interesting title and something hopefully we've all thought about, like, why am I not making more progress in my Christian life? But he starts off with Hebrews 5, 10 through 13. Called of God and high priest after the order of Melchizedek, of whom we have many things to say and hard to be uttered, seeing ye are dull of hearing. For when for the first time ye ought to be teachers, you have need that one teach you again, which be the first principles of the oracles of God, and are become such as have need of milk and not of strong meat. For every one that useth milk is unskillful in the word of righteousness, for he is a babe. So he's talking about the milk. We have all are probably familiar with this scripture, but I wanted to insert here just really quickly. You know, let's keep in mind an infant is completely helpless. Okay, an infant can do nothing for himself and he needs someone else to take care of him completely. That's what Paul's referring to. And so when we talk about the Christians that are still on the milk, keep that little picture of an infant in the back of your mind. He says there are five warnings found in the epistle. The first was against indifference and neglect. The second against unbelief and disobedience. The third deals specially with the sloth that prevents all progress in the Christian life. Sloth, okay? And that renders the soul incapable of entering into the full meaning of gospel truth and blessing and often leads to an entire falling away. So sloth is a pretty dangerous, um, <clears throat> excuse me, a pretty dangerous enemy that can just kind of slip in under the radar undetected. And we, we really need to be aware of it. He says, no teaching can profit where the heart is not wakened up to hunger for it as its necessary food. So if your heart is slothful and it, you're just kind of, you know, you got a heart that's just kind of a couch potato kind of laying around waiting for something to happen, waiting for God to do some things. Well, then your heart's not ready to hear the word of God. It's not going to profit where it's not hungering for the word of God. He says, we have many things to say, Paul says this, and hard of interpretation because ye are becoming dull, of, you are become dull of hearing. Spiritual things must be spiritually discerned, Andrew says. Spiritual truth can only be received by the spiritual mind, by a heart that thirsts for God and sacrifices this world for the knowledge and enjoyment of the unseen one. They were content with their knowledge of the crucified Christ, the heavenly Christ, and his power to draw them up out of the world and to give heaven into their hearts. Had I'm sorry, let me read that again. So he's saying people that are slothful in their Christianity, they're content with their knowledge of the crucified Christ. They have the knowledge that Christ died for their sins. But he says, the heavenly Christ and his power to draw them up out of the world and to give heaven into their hearts has but little attraction. So they're just kind of content like, yep, Jesus died for me. I'm good. I'm just going to keep on living my life and enjoying life. And, you know, we, we've got, there is more. We've got to understand who Jesus is sitting on the throne at the right hand of the Father, that he is our high priest. That's what the goal of this entire series and us going through this book is because I want to understand this. Just like Paul said, I want to know him in the power of his resurrection. That's what I want to understand. I don't think we've tapped into that in, in, in our, especially in the culture in America of Christianity. And I want to understand more. I want to, I want to know more than what has been offered so far. And I, I put a little note here. You know, this is what we need so much right now to be in the world, but not of it. And I want to insert here Revelations 18, 1 through 5. 
And after these things, I saw another angel come down from heaven, having great power, and the earth was lightened with his glory. And he cried mightily with a strong voice, saying, Babylon the great is fallen, is fallen, and is become the habitation of devils, and the hold of every foul spirit, and a cage of every unclean and hateful bird. For all nations have drunk of the wine of the wrath of her fornication, and the kings of the earth have committed fornication with her, and the merchants of the earth are waxed rich through the abundance of her delicacies. And I heard another voice from heaven saying, Come out of her, my people, that ye be not partakers of her sins, and that ye receive not of her plagues. For her sins have reached into heaven, and God hath remembered her iniquities. So God is telling us there, get removed out of this world. Get removed from the world. Be in it, but not of it. Because there is judgment coming on Babylon. There is judgment coming on the world system. And God's wanting us to unplug from that and plug into Jesus on the throne and what he wants us to do as his agents of, of mercy and of righteousness to those that are lost, to those that are blinded, or to those that are feeble and, and need help walking this life with God in this world right now. <clears throat> Excuse me. But anyway, getting back to what Andrew said, he says, by reason of the time ye ought to be teachers. In the Christian life, everyone who makes real progress feels himself constrained to teach others. So when you are, you're like, wow, okay, God's showing me this. God's showing me that. I've seen victory here. I've seen victory there. You should have a growing sense of, I need to share this with other people. There's always other people that need to be encouraged or to be to have understanding of things in the word that, that they don't have that maybe God has shown you. He says, he quoting Paul, he says, Ye have need again that someone teach you the rudiments of the beginning of the oracles of God. So he's saying by now you should be teaching others, but you're still sitting here, you know, instead of you graduating high school or college, you're still in kindergarten or maybe preschool. He's like, you still need the elementary or rudimentary things, um, but you should have moved on. And what was the reason? Like Andrew says, it was sloth. And Andrew says, so there are numbers of Christians whose Christian life consists very much in always learning, but they never get beyond the stage of being fed. They know not what it is to feed others. <clears throat> now, excuse me, for those of you who are parents, if you have raised a child, let's even say just even to toddlerhood, you're teaching that child, hopefully by then, to feed themselves like hopefully you're not still shoveling food uh on the on a spoon or you know you're you're hoping even before they're a year old that you're trying to encourage them here's some cheerios here's some little snacks you know here's some i don't know some little vegetables you know and you want them to even just pick it up with their hands and start feeding themselves but andrew's talking here about christians who just sit around wanting to be fed and never coming to a place where they're feeding others. And I'm reminded, I don't know all the lyrics, but there was a, back a long time ago when I got saved, apparently there was a popular song called Big Fat Baby, which was talking about this condition of Christians who are just going to church wanting to be fed, just like a, and just like a huge baby that just keeps growing and growing and is never maturing and just wanting more and more to be fed. And that's kind of the same picture here. Um, Andrew says, There is no effort to appropriate God's word as to be strong to impart it to others. Or there is no real longing for deliverance from the power of sin and the great incentive to the fuller knowledge of Jesus and his heavenly power is wanting. So he's saying... Okay, not only are you not like, hey, I need to go help somebody else. I need to feed someone else and teach them. He's saying there's no real longing for deliverance from the power of sin. Like you're not even in the process of sanctification. You're not even saying, God, I see my, I see this, this junk that's still in my spiritual closet. And I, I need you to get this out. I, I need you to help me to overcome. He's, he's like, there's no incentive there. He says there's no incentive to fuller knowledge of fuller knowledge of Jesus and his heavenly power. And that's what I'm trying to walk walk with you through this, 
because I'm still learning this too, but I want to know what that greater heavenly power is that Jesus has in store for us to walk through this dark world. He goes on to say, and ye are become such as have need of milk and not of solid food. He said, where there is no hunger for the solid food, the higher truth of Christ's heavenly priesthood, that's meat, or willingness, or he says, or unwillingness to use what is received in helping others. So you've received, but you're not willing to use it to help others. The spiritual faculties are dwarfed and enfeebled. So when you don't have a hunger for meat, the meat of the word, when you don't want to help others with what you've received, then you're, you're shrinking. You're becoming, you're, you have, you're dwarfed, your powers, your spiritual faculties are dwarfed and enfeebled. And the Christian never gets beyond the use of the milk meant for babes. In the Christian life, as in nature, there are two stages, the one of infancy or childhood, the other of manhood. In nature, the growth out of the one into the, into the one, wait a minute, the nature, in nature, the growth out of the one into the other comes spontaneously. <clears throat> so in nature, it just happens, right? It just gradually, it, it's going to happen. In grace, this is not so. He says, it is possible for a Christian to remain in a sickly infancy all his life, always needing help instead of being a help. And I put here, can you imagine what you would be like in this stage of your life if up till now all you ever had was milk? You know, and I, I'm not demeaning um, someone with special needs at all, but when, when I was in college, we had to go to different facilities. I was getting a, a degree in special education. And we had to go to different facets of special education um, areas so that we could under, we could figure out which one we wanted to specialize in. And so there was a time where we had to go to a facility that was just a school for, for mentally um, and physically retarded children who um, they could not be, they could not be, um, included in the even in the the regular school i mean they were some of these children had such severe um, physical disabilities that it was close to almost hospital care i remember seeing one boy who i don't remember i don't remember his um his diagnosis but he had had some issues from birth and had some brain um some brain issues and so his body was he was he was permanently on a gurney and but you know they worked with him throughout the day the teachers did in that specialty area anyway i mean and and he was sweet and his mother was precious and but i remember you know my heart was just broken for her because it would be so hard to see you know your young son he was probably nine or ten years old and he was never going to even do the normal things that a that a, a normal little boy would do, like run outside and kick a ball, that would, that would be a complete impossibility for this boy in his condition. But can you imagine, that's, that's, what, that's a tragedy, right? But when someone is, is choosing that deliberately in their spiritual life to just be, um, I mean, I don't even know how to put it, but just to, to, to just do to uh, thwart their growth, thwart their development in what God wants them to do. And that's, it's not something that happens to them like this boy, but it's something they deliberately choose by neglecting their spiritual walk. I think that's a tragedy. And it's a tragedy that will be felt throughout eternity. Even if you go to heaven, you know, it's, it's going to be a regret. So, um, I, and then Andrew goes on to say, the cause of this is sloth, reluctance to make the sacrifice needed of progress. Exactly what I just got done saying, reluctance to make the sacrifice. So it's a choice, unwillingness to forsake all and follow Jesus. And this again is very much owing to the fatal mistake that in religion, our only thought is to be of safety. Okay, so when people are just thinking about me, 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 and I just want to be safe, and something else Andrew says, that we may be content 
when some assurance of that is attained. So we just want to be safe and content. We want to be safe and happy. Remember what, um, I know this, diff you know, it's a different thought here, but it reminds me of when Isaiah said, when people say peace and safety, peace and safety, beware. All right, well, beware when you're, that's all your flesh wants is peace and safety. And you're not going after what God is telling you to go after. The purpose that he put you on this earth, you're saying no to it. And he says here, such a soul cares not for the heavenly blessedness of conformity to Jesus, of living fellowship with God, and the godlike privilege of bringing life and blessing to men. All right. To me, that goes back to Adam and Eve. They didn't want to conform to what God said to do. Such a soul cares not for the heavenly blessedness of conformity to Jesus, of Jesus, to Jesus, of living fellowship with God. Adam and Eve rejected living fellowship with God. So that is a problem. That started a lot of problems. He said, it is one of the great needs of the teachers in the church in our day that they should have a clear insight into the feeble and sickly state into which most Christians live, as well as, as into what constitute a health, as well as what constitutes a healthy life that goes on to perfection. So he's saying teachers need to have some discernment here. Like, you know, we got some sickly ones. Let's know what sickly looks like. Let's know what healthy spiritual walk looks like. And let's, you know, let's get them on this track to heavenly life that goes on to perfection. As they themselves enter into the full experience of the power of Christ's priesthood, as the Holy Spirit imparts it in the heart, they will be able to reprove with authority and effectually to help all upright souls into the full salvation Christ has provided. God give his church such teachers. So he's saying these people, not only these teachers need not only discern what's healthy and what's sick, but he's like, they need to be reproving people and saying, hey, you need to be, you need to figure this out. You need to be getting, you know, getting off the couch and get working for God, spiritually speaking. And, you know, that's going to take boldness. It's going to take boldness to speak the truth in love and tell people something that they may not like. And that's what we need in, in, the, in the world today. That's being the light of Jesus. Remember, Jesus said, you're the light of the world. He says, let us pray God to convince us of our sloth. All of us, we, know, we all are susceptible to becoming slothful. You know, we have this flesh nature that just wants to sit around and watch TV and eat Cheetos and just do nothing. But he says, our contentment with the beginnings of grace so when we, we're slothful, we're like, we're content with just like, yeah, I know, I know all, you know, Jesus died for my sins. I prayed to receive Jesus. I'm good. He's like, we can't be content with that anymore. He says, and we, do, we need to stir in us a burning thirst after himself. Well, thank you for watching this video. I hope that it has inspired you to um, a, just a, a more growing walk with God and uh, I appreciate you watching and please tune in for the next episode. God bless.